Good evening, traders. It is Wednesday, January 29th, and it is time for our weekly video. So let's look for some swing trades tonight, and let's get our market bearings before we do anything. So you can see how the markets had this really nice, tight, upward channel that it's been trading in. There's the upper end of the range, and now we have the lower end of the range. Well, this week, we had a breakdown below the lower end of that range, the market has been able to recover a little bit in the last two days, but you can see today it actually filled in that gap, but it sold off late in the day and it closed on its low. That's not a particularly great sign. We had Apple earnings yesterday. Apple put in a strong day today, which finished at a new all-time high. So that's one of the mega cap tech stocks out of the way. Today after the close, Microsoft had a fantastic number. It was up about two and a half, three percent after the close today, so that looked pretty good. Facebook was a little bit of a problem. Facebook was down about six percent after reporting earnings, so that is going to weigh on the market a little bit. We also had Tesla, which is not a huge market cap stock, but it's getting bigger. That had a huge rally as well. All told, today's market reaction to the earnings after the close I'd have to say it's fairly neutral to balanced. And what we're looking for right now is for the market to be able to tread water during, during earnings announcements. Mega cap stocks dictate the price action. And I'll tell you that after the mega cap tech stocks have reported, the air gets let out of the balloon a little bit. So anybody that was looking to short the market, they hold off until mega cap tech stocks have reported. Profit takers, they also tend to hold off until mega cap tech earnings have been reported. Well, with Intel, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Amazon out of the way tomorrow, the only remaining one would be Google. So most of the mega cap tech stocks will have reported and the market has been able to hang in there, but it has not been able to rally. And I feel that the headwinds are gonna get stiffer and stiffer once we get through Google earnings. So I am looking for this range to be intact. And that's from SPY 335 to SPY 320. Now we can expect a second leg down that tests this low. It may only happen briefly intraday and then bounce. It may come down and spend time there, but I feel that that 320 support level right here will hold 325 is actually a very sticky level as well so we could just come back to 325 and then bounce off of that once that selling pressure has run its course i'll feel a little bit better the coronavirus is temporary but i feel that the market is completely discounting this event so that's not necessarily a good thing and i feel that earnings have been Excellent, but they need to be just for the market to tread water. Now, during the first quarter, stocks will have time to digest the recent run-up and the high valuations, and they'll have time to grow into those valuations. So that's much needed time. We were in go, 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 go mode here. We're going to pause for a little bit. And then perhaps in another three or four months or so, provided that economic conditions remain strong, we should see the market be able to move higher into the second half of the year. So it's just really good for bullish put spreads, but we need to be very, very selective. And we need to be particularly careful over the course of the next week or two. So we can expect this second drop to come. So here's the other thing that I want to mention is last week we had this bar right here, that's January 22nd. That's when we recorded the weekly swing trading video. During that video, I had mentioned, you know, the market made a new all-time high, and then it spent the rest of the day reversing, and it closed on its low. That was not a good sign. We had a little bit of a reprieve on Thursday, and then Friday, we had a very, very nasty day. Now, this is a bearish engulfing pattern that took out the entire week. So that was problematic. Monday, we dropped on that coronavirus news and the market was able to gradually climb higher, but 
It was able to do so on the notion that earnings would be good and that the Fed would be dovish. The FOMC statement came out today. There really wasn't anything new. So that's kind of out of the way. The Fed will remain accommodative. So everything looks good right now. I don't have any huge problems. I just feel that there might be some nervous jitters caused by the coronavirus. And I feel that valuations could be a little bit stretched. So provided that SPY 320 stays intact, we're going to stick with the strategy of selling out of the money bullish put spreads. Now, I would suggest that if the market does come back, and I had mentioned this last week, if you do these bullish put spreads with the market up here, buy some VXX for protection. And I'm going to put up the VXX. This measures option implied volatility. And when the market drops, option implied volatility spike. So if you took my advice and you put that hedge on, it will have helped to soften some of the uh, price action that we saw this last week because some of our bullish put spreads, they did get into trouble and we kind of expected that. So make sure you're hedging with VXX, especially if the market looks particularly weak. You can also buy some SPY puts. Now on Friday, we bought a lot of SPY puts in the chat room. We traded SPY puts. We bought them almost instantly on the open Friday morning. We rode them all day. We made about a 70% profit on those Friday. We sold half the position. I held half the position over until Monday morning, sold the rest of them for about a 300% profit. So we do need to have some hedges in case the market pulls back like that. I highly, highly recommend that you check into the chat room every day and see what the comments are, see how we're positioning ourselves so that if you need to take some protection, you can do that. So just a word of advice. I'm looking for some nervous jitters to still be out there probably for the next, I would say, week or so. And I think that the coronavirus is accelerating. So we, we could see another market dip here very soon. So let's take a look at our trades from last week and we'll see how we did. Here are all the trades. Abbott. So Abbott announced earnings. We had this beautiful breakout. Stock closed on its high. Even though the market was soft that day, it looked like it wanted to run. But it did run into trouble. And you can see the selling in here. We were expecting this $90 price level, that gap, that low from the gapping day to hold. So we're okay. We're okay. All right. Now we close below it. Now we've got to get out. So, and we've got some tails forming about body. That's a sign of resistance. Resistance right at that level that should have been support. This was a loser. Okay. Pure and simple. That's okay. Take your lumps. Get out of the trade. Abbott might shape up. We could actually get back into Abbott if things continue to shape up for the stock. So we'll keep it on our watch list. But again, if you had the VXX hedge on, if you checked in in the chat room and you bought some puts for protection Friday, held a few of them over till Monday, any losses that you had on these put spreads should have been more than offset. And a lot of them took a little bit of heat, as you'll see, and then they bounced right back. Amron, no problem. Uh, Amron in here on January 22nd, but we needed the stock to pull back. And I expected the stock to pull back because it has these long tails and this choppy price action. But I do like the support level right here. And I'd mentioned bouncing one, two, three, four times. So we wanted to sell below these major moving averages using the 19 strike price as our short put. And so, yes, Monday, it came down, it tested those major moving averages, it bounced, and right now we're still at that 19, actually 18, let me take a look at the close today, was uh, 1930, so we are still out of the money on it. I still like this spread. Has it moved against us? Is it probably losing money? Yes, but if it sits here for another week, those options will expire worthless. So. It's not in great shape. It's probably a little bit against us, but it's still out of the money and still above that technical support level that we want to hold. COF 
was another stock that broke out on earnings, got through this horizontal resistance. This is the resistance level that now is support, and that was also the open from that bar. That was our premise, was this had to hold. So the next day, January 23rd, when you could have traded it, yes, the stock pulled back a little bit, but it was still holding that open. But by Friday, you had to close her down because it closed below that low, and that would have shaken us out for a loss. So there's two losses. LOW, LOW, we needed a little bit of a pullback. This is where the video came out in here. And I had mentioned I like selling this 118, 117 bullish put spread. And you can see here how the stock did dip below. Got down to 118, but it didn't close below 118. So you had a maybe a little bit of a scare intraday and then boop, right back. Right now, it's in great shape. So I, that spread is actually making money right now. NVIDIA. NVIDIA, we were selling the 340 puts. And you can see that horizontal support. You can see how on Monday the stock opened much lower, but it spent the entire day rally, 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 closed near its high. Tuesday it popped right back. So you might have to weather a day below that technical support in the stock. As long as the market is holding up and the market's not falling apart, give the spreads a day or two to recover. And that's exactly what we needed here. So now you can see the stock is comfortably above that 240 strike price, and it's actually looking pretty decent. And I believe that was a Jan 31 that'll expire in two days. So you got to keep an eye on it, but it is $5 out of the money. That spread should be making money in here. Got a week under our belt. Shake Shack. Shake Shack, we're selling this 65 strike down here. You can see it did dip with the market, but now it's been able to recover. In fact, it's held that opening price right there, which is also support. Shake Shack should be in pretty good shape for us. It might be against us a little bit. I believe this was a two and a half week spread, meaning we had to go two and a half weeks out. So still got lots of time for this one to work out. Or actually, I should rephrase that. We have to be in the trade for another week and a half or so, but it's actually doing pretty well, and it's way away from that $65 strike price. And I believe most of the spreads that I put up last week, we needed a little bit of help from the stock to be able to get into the position. So flat out, ABT, loser. Flat out, COF, loser. Amron, in decent shape, low, in decent shape, NVIDIA, decent shape, Shaq, in decent shape. So two out of the four were losers, four out of the others were probably slightly against us, but still in decent shape because they're above that technical support level. So all told, if you had a little bit of a hedge on with VXX and you bought some puts Friday, maybe held a few over the weekend, you should be way ahead of the game. Even if you didn't, you know, this was not a big, uh, awful week that we had in terms of losses. So uh, we've been making money for five months consistently, week in and week out. We know we're going to take some little lumps along the way. And with a drop like that in the market and being short bullish put spreads, we did actually pretty well. So I'm very satisfied. But I think we need to tread very cautiously here. I still think there's going to be one more leg down. I don't think there's an asset manager out there right now who feels that they have to rush in and buy stocks at a forward PE of 18. And you've got the mega cap tech stocks announcing earnings and they'll be out of the way in the next couple of days and the air will get let out of the balloon and the coronavirus is still looming. There's no hurry to get in right now. So, Given that situation, I'm not overly anxious to go putting out a bunch of bullish put spreads either. Now, the earnings announcements are just coming out right now. They're just starting to crank up. So we've had maybe a day or two of really heavy earnings announcements, but that's going to continue for the next two weeks. So we'll have more and more candidates to look at with each week. Next Wednesday, I'll have a ton of them and we'll have two or three, four days to 
monitor the stocks and how they've reacted to those earnings announcements and that's when we can really get into some nice plays but i've got some good picks for us this week so what i did was i used the custom search and i went back and i looked for liquid options and i looked for stocks that had announced over the past three or four weeks and then i just flipped through the charts so liquid options and have recently reported so we don't need to worry about earnings announcements for any of these companies that I'm going to be showing you tonight. They've already posted. So a lot of the risk is already out of the picture. So let's go in and take a look at what we've got. And I've got the list created for you. And then we'll take a look at where those spreads are trading. We're going to go into the Jan 29 list. First one up, Boeing. So here's what I like about Boeing. Actually, you know what? There's another one I can add to this list too. But now we'll keep with the list that we've got. Boeing comes down. You've got these long red candles closing on their low. If you've seen my daily videos, you've seen me talk about Boeing and why I like it. There's a horizontal support level. One, two, right here. Almost three. So this is a general level of support. And the stock is trying to move through that 322 level right now. Sells off bounce the next day sells off and bounce but this is happening when the market is selling off so the fact that the stock can actually bounce tells me that there are buyers when the market's selling off and you've got this type of weakness usually a stock like this will get annihilated but it didn't on friday when we had that huge market selling this stock actually finished near its high so or perhaps this was friday but in any case you can see the momentum during a weak market so it has really good relative strength i believe this 305 level right here is going to hold this is support you can also see that it had earnings today before the open it opened higher and it drifted lower closing on its low that's why there's a red candle we're going to go in and take a look at the five minute chart and you can see how it held that opening gap higher little bit of weakness on the close however let's do the overlay of the SPY this is what the market did good night Irene in the last hour of trading we had some pretty heavy selling but the stock was able to maintain itself here so I like it I think if we could get down to that 305 strike price we're going to be in really good shape so we're going to need to give this trade some time so I'm looking at going out to the February 14th expiration and we're going to bring up the option chain here February 14s and let's see what we can get now we're going to want to be down around that 305 strike price which puts us right here so we would sell the 305 puts we would buy the two 30250s and you can see that it's 19 cents bid offered at 74 cents now Boeing is not the most liquid options they're not horrible I almost think that this bid ask spread might have been widened out at the close today so you should be able to work within that spread that should not be that wide a market we'd like to try and get somewhere in the range of 50 cents for this because we have two and a half dollars between the strike prices if we bring in 50 cents that represents a 25 percent return on our risk and we've got a really nice long distance from where the stock is currently so we may need to have a little bit of a pullback in the stock and that's okay for us to have to work to try and get into these trades I would prefer to do it that way we're in no hurry but yes I like this spread right here so we're selling the February 14th 305 puts we're buying the February 14th 30250 puts and we're doing this for a 50 cent credit so let's go in and take a look at the stock one more time and if this stock does take out that 305 level and it closes below it then we got to shut the trade down now the the only caveat to that again remember is if the market does one of these one day dips and then bounces right back and the stock follows suit give it one day see if the market comes back that 320 level on the SPY that's the one we need to watch that's the one we don't want the SPY closing below 
but if it goes down and tests 325, 32250, and you get one of these funky bars in here, just to see what happens for the day, give it an extra day. I don't think we're going to see that level on this stock because even during market declines and weakness recently, we're getting buyers into this stock. So any dip, they'll be accumulating shares. I like Boeing. I think this is one that we could really lean on. So let's go to the next pick. Again, these are all post earnings, so we don't need to worry about earnings announcements. So here you've got GE. You can see how GE back in October had this horizontal resistance at the 100 day moving average and then boom, out of nowhere, the stock looks great. Well, that gap led to the next rally and now the stock starts to compress. It digests the news, gets into this relatively tight trading range horizontal resistance right here at the $12.50 level, actually $12.25, and then boom, the stock takes off today. Really good relative strength, lots of volume. You can see how it surged higher and maintained those gains all through the day, even when the market was tanking. Really good relative strength. I believe this $12.50 level on the stock is going to hold and that's what we want to lean on so we're going to go into the daily chart and i did have a question last week i'm glad i thought of it because the question was pete you show these stocks you do these videos and i'm not really sure if i'm supposed to get into those trades right away or not well here's what you should do is you've got your list You've got your stocks on your radar. I tell you in every one of the videos what my expectations are for the underlying stock. My expectation is always this, relative strength, relative strength, relative strength. If the market's down, the stock will probably be down, but I want that stock to show me that it is still strong relative to the market. So if the market's pulling in and pulling in, no, that doesn't mean go do a bunch of spreads. That means wait, evaluate the market, let support be established, and then along the way, while the market is coming in, you're evaluating all the stocks, and you're saying, oh yeah, look at this one. That one held up really well relative to the market. It wants to go higher. That's the one I want to sell a bullish put spread on. And you look at a couple of others, and you go, no, that one's not looking so good. Like COF, that stock broke out through that horizontal resistance, and it backed right off on the first sign of market weakness. So that would not be a good candidate for you to get into. And we can also take a look at Abbott that was a similar situation. So, hey, Pete comes out with his weekly swing trading video. Yeah, we like this horizontal breakout on COF and we're expecting this support level to hold right here on the open. And so we come in the next day and the market, yeah, it's pretty good and the stock looks pretty good. But by Friday, you can see it deteriorating and taking out that that low very very easily the breakout we were counting on is done if you weren't in the trade and you look at it no you absolutely don't want to be in this trade no good so make sure that you're watching the market make sure that you're monitoring that relative strength especially when you see those market pullbacks i love market pullbacks because when i have stocks that i want to buy and get long then i can watch them i can watch how well they're holding up as long as they continue to hold up well and as long as the market's not falling apart and breaking through major technical support levels yes our thesis is still intact we still like the stock still feel good about the market this is an opportunity to sell bullish out of the money put spreads on those stocks so that's how you need to handle it so let's continue uh, right now we've got Boeing and GE that we went through Costco I like Costco we had earnings way back here it does not announce for a while but it broke through this horizontal resistance level and look what it did this week it came back and it tested that horizontal resistance level and boom shot right off of it that is strong support and that support is right here around the 305 if we can get a decent credit for would be excellent i don't think we're going to get much for it we might have to go a little bit higher but let's check let's see and you can see here that on march 5th and it has its next earnings announcement so lots of time on costco but it doesn't have a lot of premium and we want to give us 
give ourselves that room to go out to the 305 strike. So I'm just going to go out to Feb 21 just to start here to see what we can get. And so if we go to the 305, 30250, we can see off screen at 64 cents bid offered at 90 cents. Well, gee, that's a two and a half point spread. I want to bring in 50 cents for that. I know I could do much better than that. So instead of going out that far in time, let's see if we can bring that in a bit. Let's go to the Feb 14s instead. Feb 14, we take a look at that 305 put, 30250 put. Let's see what we can get there. Well, even this one is bid 55 cents, offered at 83 cents. Hmm, maybe we can go even closer on this one. Or your alternative would be to go down to a lower strike price like the 30250. Yeah, that's one option that we can do. 30250 and the 300. I did not take off the previous spread here. So that's what I need to do is I need to go in and reset all these. Sorry about that. So we're in the February 7. And now if we go down and we do the 300, 297.50. Yeah, I can't get quite enough credit for that. So we're going to have to stick to maybe this spread right here. 302.50, 300. Almost can get 50 cents for that. Get a little bit of a pullback. That would be good. And that is on the February 7th expiration. Only have to wait a week for that. So that's not bad. And we're able to get down to the 30250. So again, those are 35 cents bid offered at 54 cents. Do I have to have to have to get 50 cents for it? No, if I could get 40 cents for this spread, that's still a 20% return. I would be fine with that. So I like that one. That's the spread I like. Sell the February 7th 30250 puts on Costco, buy the February 300 puts, and do that for a 40 cent credit. So I like Costco. I think that sets up really well. All right, let's take a look at the next one that we've got. And this is the only bearish play that I have. And I'm a little reluctant to do a bearish trade, but it's okay. It's on IBM, and we actually did really well on IBM into the earnings announcement. There's your earnings announcement. There's your reaction. Huge reaction, and then drifting lower very very weak price action after earnings now we've got this horizontal used to be resistance now with support that support failed this is a failed breakout so the stock now is testing the 200 day and the 100 day moving average i think this 140 level on ibm is going to be resistance and I believe the stock is going to stay below it. I'd like to see continued relative weakness and if it gets below the 200 day and the 100 day moving average even better. So we're going to be looking at that 140 strike price and let's see what we can do here. We'll go into the option chain and we're going to click on February 7th and we're going to look at that selling the 140s and buying the 141s and you can see it's 18 cents bid offered at 26 cents this is a one dollar wide spread one dollar between the strike prices in that instance i like to bring in a 20 cent credit and right now it looks like that 20 cent credit is very doable and again this expiration cycle is february 7th and this is a bearish call spread so Having at least one bearish call spread is nice, just like we had JPM a couple of weeks ago. That one actually turned out really well for us. Uh, I think that you're at least able to hedge some of your market risk by having a bearish call spread out there. So I wanted to find one. This one looks good to me. So again, recap, bearish call spread, selling the IBM February 7th, 140 calls, buying the IBM February 7th, 141 calls. We want to keep this on 
as long as the stock is below that 140 level I believe that's going to be resistance that's certainly horizontal resistance we're seeing long tails above body we saw a weekday today in the stock trying to take out those major moving averages so and if if the stock were going to be strong if this move right here was the real deal you would not have seen this type of selling even when it came down and tested that major support level you should have seen an immediate bounce buyers aren't there they're not there we had a couple of really strong days in the market stock was not able to participate in that rally let's put that SPY chart up and you'll see what I mean so you've got this rally right in here the last couple of days stock little doge eyes no if there were really strong buyers in here they would have pushed it right through and the stock would have had a nice bounce off that support level didn't happen and on a day like today you can see how the stock closed on its low and took out that major moving average we didn't have that kind of market weakness today so uh pretty weak price action i like selling that bearish call spread so let's go to the next stock intel intel we've been looking at this one i loved that breakout right in there compression 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 big horizontal breakout earnings here zoom so the stock does come back and it checks this gap and so you have to remember this is on very very heavy selling that it came back and established that low right there since then the stock has been able to hold this price level right here we want to try and sell a bullish put spread but we want to give ourselves some cushion here so let the stock come in just a little bit more I'd like to get down to right here this 6350 level this is where the stock announced earnings after the close before the earnings the stock already was comfortable being here before it had that great number I think if it comes back and checks this level it'll bounce off of it it may not even come back and check that level we've seen market weakness and the stock has still been able to hold all of those gains so let's go in actually let's take a look and see what the stock did today it was a little bit soft you can see how it kind of pulled back but overall still hanging in there very well there's your support level so let's go in and take a look at some options see where those are trading see what we can get for those 6350s now if I go out probably Intel doesn't carry a lot of premium I'm thinking I'm gonna to have to go out to well February 14th I would imagine I got to go out two and a half weeks to get a decent credit on these and to get down to that 6350 strike price so 6350 puts click on that bid $63 puts click on that ask and we can see there I've got the spread five cents bid offered at 13 cents so right now off the screen I probably could get six seven cents for it can't quite get 10 cents I want 10 cents I think the stock could easily pull back a little bit and I think that uh, we could get that fill pretty easily so hold off for 10 cents on that we would be selling the Intel February 14th 6350 puts and we would buy be buying the 63 dollar puts probably should do just a very quick lesson on this and let me put the option chain back up there when we're selling the 6350 puts we just want the stock to stay above 6350 as long as it does that the stock can move down a little bit it can move all the way down to the strike price it can stay flat it can move higher we profit in all of those scenarios when we sell out of the money bullish put spreads the other nice thing is that we're leaning on technical support levels so that increases our probability of success and our market forecast tells us that we can see sideways price action but not expect any dramatic huge market drops so we should not be expecting the rug to be pulled out from underneath us the company has already reported earnings so that surprise element is gone that's the whole premise beside uh, behind selling out of the money bullish put spreads a lot of people get very confused when you tell them we're going to make a dime but we're going to risk 40 cents well how could that possibly make sense it makes sense when you start to figure in your probability of success your probability of success is not 50 50 if it were a 50 50 proposition 
<laughs> that would not be a good trade to try and make 10 cents and risk 40 cents. But our probability of success is much higher than that, probably in the 85 percentile, given all of the elements that we're looking for and all the analysis that we've done and given the market upward momentum right now. So that's how it works and that's why it makes sense. If you're not familiar with bullish put spreads, bearish call spreads, please go to the OIC Options Industry Council. They have free education. You can learn the strategy. With just two strategies, I feel you can approach any market condition. Bullish, bearish, neutral, buying options, and doing very simple vertical spreads. That's all you need to know. You can throw the rest of it out the window. Yes, it's important to know a little bit of pricing in terms of Delta, Theta, Vega, but not over the top. Just understand what the principles are and how they impact your trades. But we're not doing ratio back spreads and condors and butterflies here. Too complicated. Plus, we're better than that. We have a directional bias on the market. We have a directional bias on the underlying stock. If we don't have a directional bias on the underlying stock, we keep looking until we find one where we can form an opinion. So the last one on the list is J&J. &J. Johnson & Johnson, really nice little grinder here. You can see the earnings before the open here, and the stock has been able to continue to float higher. So we've got this compression here. Nice little breakout, comes back, checks that compression, very orderly price action, tails under body, so yes, there's a nice little underlying bid. We've also got a nice upward sloping trend line here that we can lean on. So we've got lots of nice characteristics for this one. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on that. So yes, we want to see this upward sloping trend line preserved. We'd also like to see this horizontal support level preserved. And let's see what we can get if we sell a 146, 145 bullish put spread. So you can see this is 146.40. We're even below that a little bit. That's a really nice support level. And that should be able to hold. We got the trend line first and then we've got that horizontal support level. So let's bring up the options. The stock doesn't move much, which is good, but it means we'll probably have to go a little bit closer to the money. So we're going to go out to February 14. So now we got to wait two and a half weeks for this option to expire. And we want to stay within three weeks or so on these option plays because we want to take advantage of accelerated time decay. Plus, with earnings season coming up right now, I'd like to roll as many of these spreads as I can because as earnings come out, I've got new spreads I want to put on and these spreads will be expiring. So if I need to release margin, I can buy them back for pennies and put the new spread on. If I go longer term than that, then I've got the trade on for way too long. So again, on J&J, &J, we're looking for the 146 strike price, and we'll click on that, and we're looking at the 145s. And off screen here, you can see it's nine cents bid offered at 20 cents. So we are not quite there on this spread. Um, we might need to have the stock pull back just a little bit. Now, look at those long tails. When you look at a chart, you should instantly know what I'm referring to. When I say long tails, well, what does that mean, long tail? That means that the stock does move around. Let's put up that five-minute chart. We can see what the stock did today. It's got pretty decent price movement. So it's been from 151. Actually, not today. It didn't have very good price movement. But let's go into a 30-minute chart. There you can see a little bit better. So you've got some big red candles in here. you got some long green candles in here. The stock moves around. That's my point. So it may not be at 20 cents right now, but it probably will be in the next day or two. And this is a two and a half week play. So in the next couple of days, I'm expecting to see that stock give us that 20 cent credit that we're looking for. We need to work for these credits. I don't want to go in and bang, bang, bang. First thing, Thursday morning, Pete said he likes this one. Hit it, hit it, get in, hurry. It's going to be gone. Everybody else. No, that's not how we do this. Nice deep breath, look at the market, evaluate the spread, 
And for those of you who work during the day, when you have a hard time entering spreads, let's say on your cell phone, if that's the only way that you can do that, you can already enter a lot of these spreads and put them in GTC. And if there's a dollar spread between the strike prices, put that spread in and enter it GTC for a $1 credit. That's the most that that spread can ever be worth and you will never sell that spread for a dollar. So you don't have to worry about getting filled on it, but the spread is already on your phone. So all you have to do is, hey, I looked at Johnson & Johnson and you know what? The stock is holding up pretty well and it looks like I might be able to get my 20 cents on that spread. So you go in and adjust that GTC order. Instead of selling it for a dollar, you adjust the credit down to 20 cents. See if you can get filled. That way you don't don't have to fumble around with option chains and finding the right strike price and which one did he say again you can do it at night you can do it Wednesday night you can enter it with your brokerage firm then you can access the application on Thursday from your phone cancel the trade if you want to adjust the price much easier so that's just a way that I would approach it so that's your market analysis for the week I would say that you can expect a little bit of heat in here. We're going to have a pullback. I feel the coronavirus, people are going to take a look at uh, the impact, the economic impact in China and say, yeah, this, this looks like it's going to last for a while and it could be a little worse than expected. Some of the air will get let out of the balloon from earnings. You'll see the market start chopping around a little bit, but we'll establish that range over the course of the next week or two and then we'll trade between 335 and 320 for maybe the next month or two maybe three months even and we'll have some opportunities to sell some bullish put spreads in the meantime while stocks grow into their current valuation so not looking for anything nasty or ugly if we do happen to have a little bit of selling check in in the chat room see what we're doing see if it might be prudent for you to have some overnight protection, whether it's VXX or maybe buying a handful of SPY puts to protect your position. So uh, next week, we'll have a lot more clarity. We'll have a lot more earnings coming out. And I feel that with each passing week, we can be a little bit more confident because we'll also know the extent of the coronavirus. For those of you who are watching this video on YouTube, I typically release this three days after I post it to my members, but tonight I am actually going to post it real time. So you will be able to have a shot at these spreads tomorrow. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please turn on your notifications. You never know when I'm going to post these videos. That way you'll never miss any of these trade ideas. And for those of you who might be interested, I am running my deal of the year for my research. So make sure that you register with my website. Take the free day pass for the research and you'll be notified about that special offer. It will be ending this Sunday. You can also click help on the website to learn more about it. Thank you. Have a good night. Be prudent. Watch these stocks. Monitor that relative strength. If you see a market pullback, look for the stocks that are holding up the best. Those are your winners. Those are the ones that are going to be in really, really good shape. Thank you. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.